A skimmer produces a foam. The foam contains fish and food waste. Foam goes into a cup, then is poured down the drain. That's how a skimmer works, but understand the science behind that unlocks a type of performance that most reefers will miss. Let's fix that. There are a half dozen concepts that will lead to that. The first is understanding what a skimmer really is. It's a foam engine, a technology that's designed to mix air, water, and organics together to create and collect an ideal pollutant-laden foam. One of the challenges is a high-functioning and a malfunctioning or underperforming foam engine will all look almost identical unless you know what to look for. A malfunctioning foam engine or skimmer will have tons of bubbles, the skimmer body often almost white from so many bubbles, yet they all pop at the top, almost like a boiling pot of water. Lots of bubbles, but where's that thick, organic-laden foam skimmers are known for? The nuance between producing bubbles and organic-laden foam, a big part of what we'll explore today. Good news is this is easily fixable. A foam engine or skimmer that's functioning but not adequate to the task or set up in a manner that only captures a small portion of its capability it looks like this. The bubbles are indeed creating a stable foam at the top, and a small to reasonable amount is periodically flowing over into the cup. Observably, there's a small amount of liquid in the cup each day. If that's combined with nutrient levels that are perpetually rising every month, it's time to address. A high-functioning foam engine or skimmer will look like a foam head that has substance or thickness to it and is consistently flowing over into the collection cup. If you watch the cup for a minute or two, the foam would flow over the edge multiple times. When you empty the cup's liquid and clean the organic paste inside, it would resemble the same amount of food that you added that week with some water added. Real confirmation that it's working is when you test for nitrate and phosphate and they're near your goal, or at least not perpetually rising every month. That's mission accomplished. I share this concept of a foam engine because anyone can create a chamber of bubbles. But the best skimmer will be the one that creates and collects the most foam. Even better if it does it in the widest array of instances or installs with the least amount or easiest adjustments. Second concept, what is a bubble and how does it collect fish waste, food, or organic pollutants? A bubble is essentially a pocket of air surrounded by a thin layer of water. The bubble typically pops once the air reaches the surface of the water. We can demonstrate this with a container of salt water and an air pump where we turn the air pump on and it forms round pockets of air that rapidly rise through the water and then pop the moment that they hit the surface. A bit more similar to a skimmer is if we throw on an air stone at the end of that line. Now we get much finer mist-like bubbles, yet they still pop when they hit the surface. That's because that thin layer of water around the air just isn't enough to hold the bubble's form once it hits the surface. So what is the difference between a bubble that pops and one that holds its shape once it hits the surface? The answer is if a bubble is just two layers, a pocket of air surrounded by a thin layer of water, then a stable skimmer bubble is three layers, a pocket of air surrounded by a thin layer of water, then surrounded by a layer of organics, encapsulating the bubble and allowing it to hold its shape, even when the bubble hits the surface of the water. That layer of organics hold the bubble shape together, preventing it from popping. The more organics, the less likely it is to pop. What creates that third organic layer? Well, the bubble itself is covered in an air-water interface that has an electrical charge. That charge gives that layer an attraction to many organic waste particles in the tank. Given enough time or concentration of organics, the bubble will get coated with these organics. So a skimmer leverages the electrical charge of bubbles to our advantage to collect and remove organic waste. To demonstrate this effect, we take that same container of seawater with the air stone running, add in some skimmate from another tank, which is waste definitely attracted to the surface of bubbles, and you immediately see the effect of what we just shared. The bubbles are now surrounded with organics and creating a foam that doesn't pop as easily once it hits a surface. In fact, you can even start to see it collect. Add a bit more of the skimmate, and now you can see how even with just an air stone, we can build a foam head that collects and flows over the edge of the container in just minutes. This is the premise of how a skimmer works, and a DIY air stone model like this one is one of the foundation of today's skimmer technologies. We just use a lot more air and water these days. The third concept is the difference between a bubble and foam. And within foam, what's the difference between wet and dry foam? The primary difference between a bubble and foam is the bubbles are things that pop at the surface. Foam is the net result of the organic coated bubbles that don't pop, collecting together at the top of the water into something that looks like a stable foam head and can be collected. That stable foam head is a result of two things. One, the collection of organics that prevent many of the bubbles from popping. 
Also, gravity is causing the water to drain away, leaving a progressively thin network of water, air, and organics that we call skimmer foam that can be manipulated or scooped up and still holds its shape. This is where that dry versus wet foam comes in. Wet foam, by nature of being wet, has a lot more water in it. it. Simply hasn't drained out yet. However, one of the things about wet skimmer foam is as the water drains out, may the weaker, less stable bubbles pop. They could be weaker because they have fewer organics, because the organics on their surface have a weaker bond, gravity, elasticity, or some other pressure. A critical thing to consider is when a bubble pops, the entire thing breaks down. The air immediately goes into the room, and whatever organics were on the surface of that bubble go right back into the water the moment it pops. Dry foam, on the other hand, as the name suggests, is dry. Most of the water has drained out of it, and the foam is very stable, with very few bubbles popping at this point. One of the reasons for that is as those weaker bubbles popped in the wet foam, whatever organics were on them essentially just drained over the surface of the other bubbles, coating them in additional organics, making them stronger, more stable. This happens until essentially you've created a very dry foam that's pretty much hit its capacity for organics. It might be easiest to think of a bubble as a parking lot for organic molecules. A bubble where 33% of the spots are taken may have the strength to exist as a wet form. A bubble with 66% of the spots taken will have the strength to hold its form much longer. If 100% of the organic spots are taken, the bubble can exist in a very dry foam. One of the things that's happening in the case of a dry skimmer foam is when those weaker bubbles with less organics on them pop, they cover the remaining foam bubbles with more organics, sometimes even exchanging weaker organic bond contaminants for stronger ones that can create progressively drier foam that we talked about. Note that dry foam is capable of overcoming gravity and rising further above the natural water level in a skimmer. That wet foam transitioning to dry is something you can also see in our example. Once we turn off the air pump feeding the air stone, the wet foam immediately starts to pop, covering the rest of the foam bubbles in additional organics, a process that continues until the foam contains enough organics that it can fight the gravitational elasticity of the bubble and other pressures of the water Eventually, it's a very dry, stable network of organics. This goes back to that first concept where I mentioned that a protein skimmer is really just a foam engine. It's a tool designed to create and remove foam, not a bubble engine, which doesn't remove anything. So if yours only produces bubbles, it's both something to dig into, but also absolutely fixable once you understand all of today's concepts. The fourth concept is contact time. If a bubble is essentially a parking lot for organics with an electrical charge drawing them to its surface, how long does it take for that parking lot to get so full that the bubble is stable, collects with others, becomes foam, and gets removed? This gets at what's the right flow rate through the skimmer? How big should the skimmer be? Are smaller bubbles better than large bubbles? Is more bubbles or air better than less air? The answer is it depends, but you can make intuitively correct decisions if you know what the forces are. First, it depends on how many organics are in the water trying to park at our bubble. If there are very few organics and the tank is fed minimally, then presumably it will take longer for those organics to fill a single bubble and increase contact time is wise. Conversely, if the tank is fed heavily and filled with organics, then our bubble likely requires very little contact time to become full of organics. To some degree, it also depends on how many bubbles or parking lots you have. If you don't feed a lot, then you don't need many bubbles or parking spots or lots for the organics. In fact, if there's grossly more parking spots for the organics than there are organics, then each of these bubbles will have very few organics on them. The bubbles will be weak and pop before they can be collected. This is part of why more air in skimmers is not always better. Minimal feeders will often find that tuning the air down produces much better results. However, the opposite is also true. If you feed a lot, having more bubbles creates more surface area or parking spots and potential contact time for the organics to bind them with. I believe this is why there was a period of air wars with skimmers, where the ones with the most air intake were presumed better. The skimmers with more air are certainly more capable with heavy load tanks, but in a minimal fed tank, the top often looks like a boiling pot of water that produces bubbles, but no foam until the air is turned down. Contact time also depends on design. There are skimmer designs where you can have a ton of air and it still works in a low organic environment. What these designs do is take the small amount of organics in the water and concentrate them towards the top of the skimmer. More or less increasing the air increases the number of bubbles, parking spots for organics, and then the chances that they'll run into an attractive spot. Because the bubbles greatly outnumber the organics, the bubbles will be weak, rise to the surface and pop where they release what little organics that they had. 
The net effect of this process is more and more weak bubbles carry small amounts of organics to the surface and pop. Where they essentially concentrate the organics at the top of the skimmer, which should create a stable foam head that can be removed. All of the skimmers out there will attempt to do this to some degree, but some are just a lot better at it than others. My experience is the smaller skimmers with tons of air don't concentrate organics as well as larger skimmer bodies with the same amount of air simply because the smaller form factor has a lot more turbulence at the top, mixing those organics back in and higher flow redistributing them back throughout the skimmer and even exiting the skimmer rather than concentrating the top. However, I have found that turning the air and flow down in these smaller skimmers allows them to concentrate the organics at the top, so tuning it for air and organics is wise. Also been my experience that recirculating skimmers with separate feed pumps give a lot more control over dwell time and reduce the organics that exit the skimmer, particularly large options that concentrate those organics at the top better. I've also found that DC models that scale both air and flow rates down at the same time do better than AC pumps, where you can decrease air with a valve, but what that does is increase the flow rates, which is often less ideal. DC recirculating skimmers with separate feed pumps, an ideal option where you can control the amount of bubbles, turbulence, and feed rate of organics independently. The contact time story continues with the size of the bubble. The smaller the bubble, the more surface area they have and more sites to collect organics. I say this is worth knowing, but it's also not very actionable because many skimmers don't share the bubble size, so it's hard to compare. It's also worth noting that the smaller, more effective the bubble gets, the more likely you are to produce micro bubbles that escape and you can see them floating around the tank. The micro bubbles have so little air that they don't actually float to the surface rapidly and they can last minutes to hours before they pop. So small enough bubbles that they're attractive to organic removal, but not so small that they end up in the tank visually floating around is the goal. Now that we know how the protein skimmer works, how do we use that knowledge to tune the skimmer for peak performance? That answer is right here, how to tune a protein skimmer and the features that produce results. Episode four of the BRS TV Guide to Skimmers.